Tēnā koutou katoa ngā mahi mahana ki a koutou. Ko tarana ki te maunga, ko ngā rua hene te iwi, ko jau hei kākatoko ngā. Kia ora koutou. Welcome to this presentation today. We are, uh, Nairi and myself will be going through the report um, that we wrote regarding older Māori and age residential care in Aotearoa. So I am a pharmacist by background and health researcher, um, usually based in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, but currently um, in the US at Brown University until um, the end of the year. Thank you for joining us and hopefully um, we can have a great presentation today and it'll be great to have your contribution at the end when we go through questions and discussion. So this report was commissioned by the Health Quality and Safety Commission, um, looking to explore the literature that we already have regarding Māori and age residential care, as well as understanding um, those involved in the delivery of um, aged care, residential care services to Māori um, and their views on the current state of the sector. So an important aspect that's not covered in this report was going out to Māori communities, whānau and residents in age residential care and really understanding their experiences, perceptions, uh, needs in the aged care setting. Uh, and we acknowledge that that is something that is really important and that future solutions need to be centred on those um, voices. So the objectives today are really to highlight to you the key points from the report. Um, we want to share knowledge of positive examples where Māori leadership, Māori workforces and Māori values were central to how services have been delivered and developed. Um, and we are hoping that you can walk away with some understanding uh, and some ideas of how to apply the findings in your own practice. And we acknowledge that there'll be a wide, diverse range of people on here today um, with many areas um, of discussion and thinking that will be going on. So ways that these um, findings could be applied is in the provision of care, the uh, commissioning, the governance, um, and thinking about community planning as well. So you will have already heard from Nairi regarding the changing demographics um, of our population in Aotearoa and the differential access to ARC for Māori compared to non-Māori. So when we looked at the quality of care in ARC for Māori, there was really limited information. So although we have um, tools like InterEye, which look at uh, quality of care as well as needs of people in aged care, there's limited public published information um, about quality of care for Māori. And we also need to acknowledge that quality of care, you know, falls outside of um, outcomes that are captured in tools like InterEye. And so there needs to be more collaboration and development with residents and whānau around um, positive outcomes, what they look like and what should be measured when we're discussing quality of care for Māori in ARC. Um, we need to understand more about our workforce. So currently, um, we need to ensure that in general, the workforce are culturally competent to deliver care to Māori. And it's particularly relevant in age residential care when we see large proportions of our care staff coming from countries outside New Zealand that may have been educated outside of New Zealand. And so understanding that, um, you know, what care looks like in the local context is really important. Another aspect to this is ensuring that we um, train and maintain and retain um, Māori staff in age residential care. So um, acknowledging um, those that bring both clinical and cultural expertise and um, ensuring that we acknowledge the importance of those dual competencies. So understanding that if we are remunerating people, we're looking at both their clinical expertise, their cultural expertise, and if we're remunerating people uh, appropriately ensuring a workforce is supportive of those dual competencies, then we're more likely to re retain um, that workforce and have a sustainable model of care. So flexibility and funding models, so the resourcing that goes into age residential care is really important. Um, and it includes um, things like understanding 
uh, what means testing and as what asset testing might look like for Māori. So we have in Ma you know that might be that there's um, for Māori there are higher proportions of people living in multi generational intergenerational households. So what does that mean when um, a Fano asset is means tested? Uh, same for things like a Fano land and um, that are held in trusts and the implications of that for Māori and the context of um, colonisation where land confiscation has been central to um, that colonisation process. We also need to think about what age residential care looks like by Māori, for Māori, with Māori, so bringing Māori along in that development journey and redesigning age residential care that might look quite different to how we think of age residential care currently. I'm going to be talking now about local um, sorry, Māori service providers. I want to acknowledge here Rangi Māhora Redi from Rauawa Awa Kaumatua Charitable Trust in Kirikiriroa and her team who contributed to this report and also Georgina Martin from Te Whanua Waipareira's Y Research Research Arm uh, who contributed. Um, numerous valuable points were brought up in their um, kōrero but um, importantly um, was the fact that for Māori, age residential care is seen as a last resort um, that can be, that you know, that wants to be avoided at all cost. Um, there needs to be, because of this, there needs to be normalisation and understanding of the clinical value that you can um, receive from age residential care. And this understanding of age residential care needs to be discussed throughout the life course. So normalizing these care decisions so that it's not left for whānau when they're in an acute situation with lots of things going on, lots of decisions needing to be made, um, where you know this idea of age residential care is first brought up. It puts a lot of stress on an already um, stressful situation. Um, and there needs to be that discussion that goes on through the life course need to understand that there's diversity in the needs of Māori. So Māori aren't one conglomerate of one um, way of doing. Um, and that diversity not only exists currently um, through different people, uh, but it also will change as time goes on. And so what um, may be needed for older Māori now might be quite different for when, for example, I'm in an older age category and understanding um, my needs as I age. New care models need to be developed, and we touched on that before, but by Māori for Māori approach. Um, and as I said, this may look quite different to what um, age residential care does now. Māori lead models of care. So here I will acknowledge um, Goodwood Seadrome, Tiakina and Kelly Tikare, as well as Tina Shivers, who contributed to this report, as well as Kay Shannon, um, who's from AUT, but whose doctoral thesis looked at the care village in Ngotaha. Um, so the care village was established based on a Dutch model of care where different groups of people live within a village um, and their housing reflects different lifestyles. Um, enrolled nurses or healthcare assistants are trained not only in healthcare, but in cooking and household management. Um, and so they were upskilled in these areas so that they could deliver care within a household. And again, going back to the concept of flexibility, this um, the way that this care was going to be delivered required a dispensation from the Ministry of Health to ensure that um, the service could be provided in this way. Uh, spaces were developed where Māori values were central to the way um, things happened on a day-to-day -day basis and were honoured in everyday um, ways of working and life. It's important to note that there was Māori involvement at multiple levels here. So it was at Māori governance and advisory, there was Māori management involved and Māori delivery of care. Um, and, I, and I discussed that because really, if we're thinking about uh, new models of care and sustainable models, we need to move past um, the need for individuals to be involved for things to happen and have policies in place and also um, the depth in our workforce to uh, ensure that that these things are valued. Um, and so 
at Seadrome in West Auckland, staff and residents actually realised that they weren't providing um, an appropriate level of care for their Māori residents. Um, and this case really showed how the workforce there has gone on a journey over a period of years that um, has been constant upskilling and critical reflection of the way they deliver care. Um, and it shows how small changes can be built on and built on and developed over time and you have these really large impacts at the end. So um, now there's more incorporation of tikanga Māori and te reo Māori into daily living. There's practices that reflect a te ao Māori, a Māori world view of how things are done. Um, and these have been normalised within the care. So, for example, when, when residents arrive at a facility, a pōwhiri style welcome ceremony is undertaken where people come with their whānau, they're welcomed by current residents and staff, and they share their favourite waiata, favourite song, um, and, you know, are really welcomed into the facility. As people live there, they're encouraged to share their own cultural values, their ways that they've lived and um, things that are special to them through their life. There's also ways that they incorporate, so things like planting trees, um, people are able to plant a tree, so it provides them physical space, a, you know, way of um, claiming physical space in the whenua, the land um, that they are situated on, that there's now their home. And when people, when residents leave the facility, there's also a poroporaki type um, farewell where again favourite songs are played Fano family are present and are allowed that time to um, you know farewell the staff the staff and resident current residents are able to farewell the person that is leaving um, and there's a formal closure I guess to that uh, relationship um, although these Practices were initially developed to support Māori within the facility. It's um, taken up almost uniformly across residents now, with all res you know many many residents in Fano understanding for them the importance of that and um, the value that those practices have on their time in a facility. And Cedrum have also been involved in other aspects, so upskilling of high school students, where students from local high schools who were proficient in te reo Māori, who had understanding of tikanga Māori, would come and spend time with Māori residents. The residents would benefit from increased social interaction and had improvements on their mental health. The high school students were upskilling in areas of dementia care and healthcare more generally, um, and that was a really positive example uh, for you know, workforce development, as well as um, benefiting the residents. So what are the knowledge gaps and what are our future aspirations? We really need um, pro-equity policy and models of care. So this isn't around, you know, doing what we're currently doing and seeing whether there are equitable outcomes. It's around intentional planning for equitable outcomes. So incorporating Māori ideas, solutions, needs, desires, right from understanding what the issues are to how the design you know, services are developed, delivered, monitored um, into the future. We need to ensure that what we do is data driven. So we need better data. We need to make use of this data. And this data, when I talk about data, I don't mean just things like inter -eye, but understanding, as I said previously, around what outcomes and what positive solutions in age residential care look like for Māori and then to incorporate that into practice. We need um, a workforce strategy that allows for development and sustainability within the sector where Māori cultural values and expertise is um, valued within that. We need to understand ageing in place in the context of Māori. So what does that look like? Is it ageing at home? Is it ageing on ancestral lands? And what does that mean for an individual as well as putting processes in place to ensure that can happen across the sector? I guess finally, we look to hope for things like the health system reform and the Māori Health Authority, where we have Māori governance and commissioning of services, which, you know, personally, I'm hopeful that that allows us to have these extra options for care, different ways and flexibility in how we deliver cares and understanding that it's Māori-led, Māori-governed, um, by Māori, for Māori, with Māori approach in the age residential care sector. 
I just want to mahi to all of those that contributed to this report, um, but also acknowledge those that will have contributed over the years to our understanding in this space and pay particular um, acknowledgement to the staff that work in age residential care, as well as the residents in their whānau that um, live in residential aged care uh, and, and hopeful that we can bring all these different um, people together to really create solutions for the future. Kia ora.